Enjoy the service. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to On Fire Ministries. How are you guys doing this morning? Woo! God's setting this city on fire, amen? I want to testify to something that happened yesterday. It was absolutely amazing. So, Travis, we're off, right? Give me a thumbs up. this morning and also who's new here this morning to on fire ministries raise your hand couple watch it turn around to them and say welcome keep your hands up in the air i'll just ask the ushers to come hand out some connection cards to you so just keep your hand up until they get here all right also hopefully it's not that long but you're gonna have to get used to it because we're gonna be worshiping a lot today hallelujah all right all right, um, I want to talk quickly about the presents. We have the, the Tree of Giving. We're going to be wrapping presents on the 13th at 6.30 p.m. Here, bring wrapping paper, ribbon, boxes, etc. Okay, we can never have too much of those things. How many of you are like Victoria and you keep a storehouse of boxes and wrapping paper and everything else, right? See, look at that. Look, at, You guys are prepared for every situation to bless. I love it. All right, so 6.30 on the 13th, Chris Roy, can you come up and let everybody know what's going on Wednesday? All right, so this upcoming Wednesday, uh, we've been announcing it for like two months now, um, we are going to go to a Christmas party at Country Church of the Open Bible. If you have a student, okay, we are going to meet here at 3.30, we're leaving at 3.50, if they do not have a permission slip, I'm going to repeat this. If they do not have a permission slip, they will not be going. So make sure and see Danette, wave it around. She has extra permission slips. So please see Danette. And uh, when are we getting back, Danette? Nine? 9.15. 9 we'll be coming back here. So in case your student did not bring home the you know, weekly announcements that we gave them week after week after week, which I know is pretty normal, um, that is when we're getting back. Amen. Let's give it up for Chris and Danette. Thank you. You guys are doing an awesome job with our youth. Hallelujah. All right, we've got a big event coming up in January down in Sacramento, California. Kingdom Domain. So if we could roll the video.
the Holy Spirit needs your feet, your hands, your energy, your gifts, your time, your attention, your focus, because he has a purpose for you in the earth. If God is calling you, if you know that you are deeply loved, then you're going to say, whatever you send me, I will go. Whatever you tell me, I will do. We are the living epistle. We are by all men. Your life is a witness of Jesus. Your life is a witness of Jesus. Yes, the sermon has to be said. Yes, the sermon has to be said. The sick are supposed to be healed. Yes, the demons are supposed to supposed to leave. The dead are supposed to rise. We can't be afraid of coming against the lies of the enemy. We can't be afraid of prophesying. We can't be afraid of laying hands on the sick and expecting the sick to recover. One thing he's after. He's not after money. He's not after monuments. He's not after methods. He's after men. And he's after women. And if he can find a man or a woman who will give their lives, who will lay everything down, he can shake the world. Yeah. All right, now it's kind of a Spokane thing. I don't know what it is, but everybody waits until the last two days to register for something, okay? We're not going to do that this time. They're, they only have 1,400 spaces, and it is rapidly filling up. So don't think you can kind of wait to the last minute. If you want to go down to Kingdom Domain, make sure to register now. Everybody say, register now. Register now. Hallelujah. You said it with your own mouths. Amen. All right. We are in a time, this is the last day that we talked about this kind of season of repositioning and revelation and release, and it happens to be the day that Andre Shapoval is with us here in Spokane, Washington. And we're just so excited, Andre. Thank you for coming. We've just been waiting for this for a long, long time. So let's pray right now and then just open our hearts to what God wants to do today. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for being here. We just want you to have your way in us today. Whatever you've got to upend, change, replace, light on fire, we, we, we want to have it happen today. We want to be released into what you've called us to do, Lord, our assignment. We want to be just ever refreshed with new revelation, especially for this time, Lord. And God, we want to be exactly where you want us to be. And if we're not there, Lord, kick us, move us, pick us up, and place us there, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name, we ask this. And we ask today, Lord, that as you flow through Andre, that we would just receive the full measure of the blessing that you want to impart today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want everybody to turn to your neighbor right now, and I want you to say, receive the impartation, all right? You thought I was going to say, receive the anointing. I, 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 I saw you right there. <laughs> all right. You guys really take it seriously when we talk about taking dominion and multiplying. So we got one more baby dedication today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Ezra Hug, come on up. Oh, you need to find him first. Well, I, I thought he was carried. Is he walking already? <laughs> we'll ask the elders and, elders and deacons to come on up. to live in what you've called him to do, Lord. Lord, that just like his namesake, there's renewal coming into the land through him. There's restoration coming into the land through him. There's spiritual restoration coming into the land through him. That through him, Lord, you're going to turn people toward you, Lord. 
God, I just thank you for that right now. I just hear, I hear wall of faith. I love that. Thank you, Lord, for that. We just thank you, Lord, that when we, we dedicate children to you, Lord, that heaven cheers. And we thank you that heaven is cheering right now. In Jesus' name. We bless the little Ezra. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we dedicate him to you. Lord, he is your missionary. He is going to Kenya next month. Lord, we bless him. <laughs> Lord, he's gonna he's gonna fulfill the destiny that you call him to go into. Lord, he's gonna be prophesying, healing the sick, casting out demons. He'll be walking in your victory, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Protect his mind, his heart, Lord. He is your baby. Lord, we thank you for that he is healthy, Lord, that he is loved. We bless him and dedicate him to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you
and right now I tossed it out on the ground some of you have been tossing this out just so you can walk to your cars I tossed this salt out so my wife could make it to the car this morning and the Holy Spirit just asked me is this what you're going to be? Are you going to be traction sand? Essentially, Jesus said, when salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing but simply to be tossed out so my wife doesn't slip. But I would much rather be in my wife's life and in God's life flavor. And I just speak over us right now. God has called us in this house to be full of flavor. We are not traction sand. Somebody say amen. We are not going to be trampled underfoot by men. We are... We are going to lift up the mighty name of Jesus in such a way, Lord God, that's going to make it seem like it is the most overseasoned piece of meat on the planet, God. And we declare right now that even in California, Lord Jesus, where you're raising up in the city of Sacramento, where I was born, Lord Jesus, a new flavor and a new sound, Lord God, like the world has never heard, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that Sacramento is changed. And even without snow, Lord God, God, a new type of traction sand is being released God a flavor of heaven Lord God we just declare with joy right now we are going to come into your presence Lord full of joy say joy say come all ye faithful joyful and triumphant sing it again come all ye faithful joyful and triumphant in Jesus' mighty name, everybody said. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, faithful, joyful and triumphant.
Lord Jesus, something new. So, Father, I ask you, make us ready, Lord Jesus. Make us ready, Lord God. We ask right now, make us ready, our hearts ready. We come before you, Jesus. And we want your presence in a new manifest way, Lord God. And it's already here. We ask you, purify our hearts with a new fire, Jesus. Saints, go ahead and come and take the elements. Oh 
thank you that your body is a testimony that your bread is word that you are the word of life and we thank you for that and as we take communion with you right now we thank you for opening the door and paving the way so we can be with you forever receive your word we receive your life right now in your name Jesus thank you for your blood Lord Jesus the blood that has washed us clean not will but has washed us clean and that you paid for everything on the cross everything you want to redeem it for your kingdom and Lord we thank you right now we plead your blood over our families over our community and God we thank you that you're even right now redeeming things that were lost but now are found that were dirty and broken but are now are clean and whole that covenant, that new covenant with you, a new covenant of life, a new covenant in your kingdom as your sons and daughters, in Jesus' name.
same God, yes. Just declare to heaven, tell him, you're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God. I'm calling on the God of Mary. I'm calling on the God. Let's sing it again. Verse 2, I want to call upon the God of Mary because right after that, we're going to sing about calling upon the God of David. And God is raising up right now Marys and Davids, women and men of God. Women of God, shout out right now. Men of God, just make a mighty sound right now. Men of God, come on. Jesus. I just pray over the Marys, Lord Jesus, and the Davids. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. Come on, get excited. I'm calling on the God of David. Come on and make a shout. The one who shepherd boy courageous. Come on. I may not face Goliath, but I got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Your daddy, I need you. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. stereotypical thing I just I want to ask you to take off your shoes I want you to be hungry for holiness and fire 
fire. And I just ask God to show up. Just set your shoes aside. If you got high heels, just thank your toes now. Jesus, you're the same God. You were there, God, when the light took its first breath. You were there, Jesus. Jesus, what a beautiful name it is, Jesus. You are so beautiful. Just sit in his glory for a little while, for a little while. God was just talking to me about, you know, we were talking about David and, and Goliath. And one thing we forget about is that there were many giants that fell after Goliath. And there's, I feel like there's a breakthrough that we're, there's something about, you know, the first guy that ran a four minute mile and then there was breakthrough. And then there's all kinds of people running four minute miles. And there's just something that God, we're on, there's, and where God wants us to press into him and then there, and it's going to release heaven on earth, where you're going to see, and and there's some, you know, that Goliath was the only giant that it says David faced alone. The rest of them, it was it was his men, it was the the team. But it's like there's something about sometimes God brings us to that place where we have to go alone to the mountain. We have to go alone into His presence. We have to go alone to our God, and then there's breakthrough. And it was like there's a generational breakthrough. We have a, we have a generational calling that we, are, that we are breaking through and our kids will slay giants upon giants upon giants upon giants. But we have to be willing to go ourselves. In Jesus.
begin to lift up your prayers in this place. Just begin to lift up his name. Come on and just see.
thought of the grace of God is just kind of a lump, like a thing there, like God's grace, there it is. But I was looking up the words, I don't, probably can't pronounce it, Demi, Haris. <laughs> and the grace is actually a connective thing. It is like, it is an act or it is a manner of God's kindness to us. So it's not just like a lump of grace. God said, oh, here's my grace. I gave it to you and it's sufficient, but it's flowing out of relationship with him of knowing his kindness to us, out of that constant flood of connection, of abiding in the vine. And last night I got to repent because I've been trying this week to just be a good mom. (laughs) And God told me, he said, I never called you to something that you could do without me. You know, people say, how do you do it? How do you have eight kids? How do you homeschool? I don't. And if I try, it works out really, really badly. And the Lord was just showing me that. He said, I never called you to something that you could accomplish in your own strength. And when I stood there with my imagined, perceived lump of grace, but I wasn't flowing in connection with my Savior and receiving from Him, there's death in that place and we can't make it long. But God's grace, thank you, Lord, it is living and active. And He brought this scripture to mind I want to share with you out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 it says but since you excel in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in complete earnest and earnestness in the love we have kindled in you see that you also excel in this grace of giving i'm not commanding you but i want you to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that through his poverty, you might become rich. Don't tell me that God has a problem with people being rich. It says it right here. He took stripes. He suffered. He laid down his life so that we could be the beloved sons and have it all. And I just felt like God wanted me to impart to every one of you. Maybe like me, you've been trying in your finances to just get by on your own. God, here's your 10% and I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to work with this 90 and see what I can do. That's not what he's called us to. There is a grace that comes out of connectivity with our Father, with his kindness. And so I want to issue a call to repentance for any one of you who has not been operating in that grace of giving who's been striving, who've been trying to figure it out on your own. I just want to declare there is a grace for giving in this place. Lord, we repent. We bring you every area of our life that we have tried to manage on our own. 
God, that is not in accordance with your word. That is not what sons and daughters do. And so, Lord, we repent for that. And right now, I release a supernatural grace of giving. Even in this chapter in the word, it says those gave even beyond their ability. I thank you that we are a body that is giving beyond our ability by faith that we will give what we don't even have yet because we know that our God is a good provider, that you will open up the storehouses of heaven and release your blessing. And so I just declare your favor in Jesus. I thank you that you pick us up in our mess and you restore us with your grace. I just release that grace to every person today as we give our tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Jesus, we just connect our earthly efforts, Lord Jesus, with heaven right now, God. Just sing what a beautiful name right now. We thank you, Jesus. Spokane and what he's about to do in Spokane. It's not about one person. It's too big for one church. Yes. It's going to be his body here. All of it working together in unity in the spirit. It is going to release his fire. It is going to impact Spokane for his kingdom. Yes. And it all depends on us being in intimacy in his presence. And we all have to answer that question right now. Do we actually want to go into that level of intimacy? Yes. Yes. If you believe that, I want you to say yes. Yes. That's what God wants to release right now. And Lord Jesus, we receive that right now. 
Make us more hungry for you. God, we want to be hungry in the morning, hungry in the evening, hungry during the day. so hungry for you. Lord, increase our hunger. Increase our hunger for intimacy with you. That we can just come into that secret place with you. And we don't need to say anything, but we can just be there with you. And Lord, may that spread here through this, your crystal city in Spokane. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Woo. Let's give some honor to the worship team as well. Thank you guys. Yeah. Want to go ahead and honor some of the, there are a bunch of ministries here and I just, I just want to honor the fact that we are coming together in unity in the body. And again, it's not about one church or one guy or anything like that. It is about the body of Christ taking dominion over Spokane, Washington. Woo! That one little word, that one little word, it's a trigger word. So say it often, all right? Because it reminds us of our, our mission, our assignment. And so with that, if we can uh, go ahead and roll the video. Pastor Andre Shapova, America, Kamsa, Yumibantu, Aurochu. The time we're living now is not about watching the world pass you by. It's not the time to passively wait for the next big thing. It's not the time to hide in a corner, hoping something will change. It's not the time to pay more attention to what is lacking. The time now is for you and I to actively gather the harvest. The time is now for you and I to step out in God's given authority and create kingdom reality. The time is now for you and I to be radically charged for the sake of the gospel. Listen, the time is now for you and I to be fully equipped to take the gospel to our neighbors and worldwide. The time is now for you and I to be a witness of the manifest, wonder-working power of the Spirit of God on this earth. The time is now. Woo! And welcome to the man, and we would not be here at On Fire Ministries without what God has done through Pastor Andre Shapoval of Flame of Fire Ministries in Sacramento, California. And we honor you. We thank you that you said yes to the Lord, and we honor the authority that you walk in and the fire that surrounds even your words because it all comes from him. We love you. Welcome to On Fire Ministries. Let's give him a Spokane welcome. Amen. Wow. What an honor just to be here. Honestly, thank you so much, Pastor Matt and Victoria, all the leaders of this house and elders and minister ministers thank you so much for having me but you know as i was worshiping god this thought came to my head just to say thank you to all american people sitting here honestly thank you so much for receiving us into this country i just want to honor you and bless you because now this place and this country helps us so much to spread the gospel around the world. So thank you for receiving us. May God bless you and reward you. And thank you for receiving me now in this house. And you need grace of God to understand my accent. And 
and all my mistakes which doesn't stop me to preach the gospel <laughs> I just want to honor you and bless you thank you so much I believe God prepared something special for this for this morning just open your heart and uh, in your mind I know your body is here is here in this place but I want your mind to be here and I want your focus to be here and sometimes it's not easy because our thoughts fly in the lower don't think about food don't think about steak don't think about anything else right now just think about the kingdom of God and pursue the kingdom of God and I know God will do something amazing in your life yes you know my name is Andre and uh, I'm 43 years old even still I look young and people still thinking I'm 25 years old which I'm grateful I said yeah if you want to stay handsome like Alex he's our pastor worship pastor uh, thank you so much for being with me and then Cornell thank you so much for being with me and my son one of my sons is somewhere here he left <laughs> and the Spirit of God just took him somewhere he's a prophet he's a, his name is Isaiah I have four kids and um, I don't know where I'm going with all of this But I always tell people, if you want us stay handsome and beautiful for girls, there is a spiritual diet called presence of God. <laughs> Just stay in His presence and you will, sh you'll, you will shine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, you know, 20 years ago, even though I grew up in Christian community, but you know the church cannot save you. And... Uh, until I was 22 years old I was lost in the world even though I knew there is a calling upon my life when I was 22 years old on an Easter day April 1st I ended up in one of the small churches and the Spirit of God came upon me tremendously first time in my life I heard the voice of God inside of me you know because when I was there one of the preacher came from South Africa and he was preaching about Lazarus that he was dead for four days and then when Jesus spoke to the Lazarus and he said come out I literally heard the voice of God spoke inside of me he was speaking inside of me son come out and I came out and I was crying for hours surrendering myself to God that day I made a decision one decision in my life that I still pursue till this day just to know him I wasn't thinking about ministry I wasn't thinking about you know those big things I was I decided just to know God I said God I knew about you I heard about you for 22 years but I don't know you now you can have all of me do whatever you want but I have I'm, I'm gonna decide I'm, I was making one decision that day I said God I just want to pursue you I want to know who you truly are from that day I began to see God like crazy some people thought I was losing my mind because I was seeking him I said God I just want to know you I just want to know you I just want to know you I want your reality in my life I, I, I don't want to just read the Bible I want the word become flesh inside of me I just want I want your reality I, I, I want to see your nature I just want to if, if, if you are good I want to taste your goodness if you are beautiful I want to I want to see that in my life I just want to know who you are because most of the time people talk about ministry people talk about churches people talk about serving God I say God but I want you in my life I want to know who you are I don't want to do ministry without you and I don't want ministry to become my God to, be, to become my God I just want to know your nature I just want to know you I was seeking the Lord then a few months later 
I was in my room praying till 2 a.m. I said, God, God, I'm losing my faith because by the time I lost everything in my life, I didn't have anything. Living in this country, I didn't have money, and I didn't have money to eat. And I, I said, God, I, I want to know. I don't even know how to live. I don't know what's going to happen with my life. I don't know what's going to happen with my future. But I said, God, I want to know you and I don't want to go back to my old life. I was involved with so many bad stuff and I don't want to even talk about that because when we speak about those things we glorify demons I want to glorify God what he's done for my life so I, as I was praying then I was laying on my bed praying in tongues and suddenly something changed in my room I did not expect that something supernatural is going to happen with my life. I was seeking the Lord. And then something came into my room in 2 a.m. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't. It's not a dream. It's not a vision. I was in my room, literally, physically, praying in tongues. And suddenly something came into my room, <laughs> like a Russian wind. And the air became so thick. It was pressing in my body. My body begins to move and I thought I'm losing my mind something is happening right now with me but this thought came to me I said God you know that I gave my life to you I'm yours so if this is you you, do, you, you can do whatever you want and soon as I said that in my mind I left my room and I was going up so fast and then someone stopped me and grabbed my hand, my arm, and I stopped. Suddenly something sucked me in into itself. Like, and then tremendous feelings start going through my body, myself. I don't even know how to describe that, but so many of you, you heard my story. It's everything in this book. Predestined, born for greatness. And, uh, and then... If you can mix colors with sound and sound with lights and lights with feelings, if you can mix all those things together, it was going through my body and I opened my eyes and Jesus himself was holding me. And everything what I was feeling was coming out out of his face. And I sat down on his laps and I was holding his face. And he begins to breathe on me. As he was breathing on me, his breath was going inside of me. And the fire of God started going through my bones. And he said, son, the day will come. I will send you around the world. And you will go into the nations and you will go into my body. And you will go with that anointing that I'm trusting you. And that anointing will ignite fire inside of my body. Because my church will be glorious. I don't know what you're waiting for, but I know the church is glorious and will be glorious even more from glory to glory. And he said, but the glory will come through my fire. And he said, if glory will come through the fire, guess what devil will attack? Guess what devil will attack? He will attack fire of God. That people will stay down and hopeless. You know, people will stay with that heaviness. What we see is happening around the world. So many people are passive. They have no energy. And it's not physical. People of God, it's spiritual. And we have to go against that. We have to cry out, God. We want to know your fire because fire of God has nothing to do with your emotions. I will talk to you a little bit more right now. But before I will talk to you about this, I want you to pray for yourself. There is so much in this book concerning your calling and your destiny to see yourself from heaven to earth. This book can change your life. It's not a Bible. But it's about your destiny through his lens and through heaven so i'm telling you it will change your life any of you have birthday
today? Huh? Any special day? Who? Cool. Please come quick, come quick, come quick. This is for you, my friend. This is for you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I also wrote this book. It's called Big God. <laughs> when God becomes bigger than your reality. To build your faith. To ignite that strength inside of you. To trust the Lord with all of your heart, soul, body, mind. When God becomes bigger than your, your, your reality. Is some of, if any of you in this... If you truly know you need this, raise your hand, please, quick. Just come, get this. Yes. And also, oh, I'm so sorry. We have to. And any, any, anybody else? Predestined? Predestined, so big God. Predestined and big God for you. Thank you. Would you pray with me? Say, God, speak to me this morning. Speak to me. Touch me. Pray for yourself. Don't pray for your neighbor. Pray for yourself. Pray, pray. Say, God, touch me tonight, uh, today. Touch me. Touch me. I, I, I want to receive from you. I want to receive for you. Father, I give you praise for this opportunity, for this privilege to stand here right now and to, to be your messenger. I am a channel. Speak through me. Teach through me. Guide these people through me. They are yours. This is your church. This is your body. And I thank you, Lord, for everything you're about to do this afternoon, you're about to do in their lives. I speak your breakthrough in every sphere in the mighty name of Jesus. And you, Satan, you hear my voice right now. And all the demons, you hear my voice. I take authority over this place and I command you to live in the mighty name of Jesus. All the sicknesses, all the disease, all the demonic attack, all the addictions, all the evil spirits, all the curses in the mighty name of Jesus, all the uh, spirit of fear and rejection and unforgiveness, I come the spirit of unbelief, I cast you out. And I speak open heaven upon this place. Pour out your spirit even more. Touch us, Lord. And you know, I promise to you, I will give you glory. Trust me, Holy Spirit, with this service. It's yours. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Alex. I will need you in a few minutes. I want you to open up with me Isaiah 33 book of Isaiah chapter 33 <clears throat> how much time do you have Pastor Matt Oof, that's dangerous I know. I see that. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I need to fly to Seattle. I have a service in Seattle this at 6 p.m. So we need to make it somehow by the grace of God. <laughs> All right. Isaiah chapter 33. Verse 14. Are you there? Please help me to be myself. Uh, and then, then if, you if you receive something, just shout amen or just say something that I know that you're alive. <laughs> because if you're going to stay silent, I will begin to scream. <laughs> and by the, by the way, when God, when Jesus was breathing on me and the breath was going inside of me, he told me, your voice will become your sign. Look at me. I'm preaching. I'm preaching all the time. Every, ev almost every single day. Almost every single day. All over the world. I just came from Ethiopia. Before that, I was in Germany. From, before Germany, I was in Spain. Before Spain, I was in Netherlands. Cornell was with me. can testify. And let me, let me, let me tell you something. Uh, 
God supernaturally protecting my voice. I never lose my voice. He told me, he said, your voice will become your sign. Because we are the voice, prophetic voice to prepare the way for the second coming of the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to the word of God. Because, you know, miracles cannot change you. Miracles cannot change your life. Miracles can impact your life, but cannot change your life. Only the word of God can change your life. Only the word of God. Yesterday, I was saying this. My spirit is sitting in the heavenly places. My mind lives in the word. And my physical body here to fulfill the mission of God. Praise the Lord. Verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us? I want you to hear this. Who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Not just come and go. Taste. Try. No, no, no. Bible says who can dwell. It means to live. To have that lifestyle. So definitely we're not dealing with emotions. Because emotions come and go. Come and go. You know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, but, uh, but Christianity or the religious system, it's all about emotions. But in the kingdom of God, it's all about the right. Who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Possible. The question is, who among us can dwell in the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with the six months experience? Oh, you will burn for God for six months and then you will become one of us. No way, Jose. I will never become, you know, like, like everybody else. I just want to dwell in the consuming fire. I want to try that. I want to see how it works. Who among us can dwell with the everlasting burnings? <laughs> everlasting burnings. Now we're dealing with the nature of God. God doesn't have eternal life. He is eternal life. He is in eternity. Are you with me? You, are you still understand me? Praise the Lord. Who among us can dwell with the everlasting burning? It's a question mark. It's an invitation. Now we see the second part, the condition of that. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly. Who despises the gain of oppressions. Who shakes his hands less than hold a bribe. Who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed. We're dealing with a distraction. We're dealing with a distraction. And I, yesterday we're here with, with leaders and I said the biggest enemy for Christians is not the devil. Devil is defeated. The biggest enemy of your progress in God, of your spiritual growth. The biggest enemy in, on your way of your transformation is the distraction. So many people are distracted what's happening in this country. Nothing new, people, is going to go worse and worse and worse in the world. But in the kingdom of God, everything is progression. 
I don't want to be distracted what's happening in the political realm. Even though God placed my life and he's taken me in every sphere and I did not deserve this. I was like, who am I to go with those big people and stand there? He said, you will teach them to have different mindset. With the kingdom authority. But we are so distracted. Our focus in the, on the internet. What's happening there? What's happening with, with different states, countries, you know, business world and real estate. And, you know, how can we get more opportunities? What's going to happen tomorrow? How are we going to live tomorrow? Uh, that's why I'm here to tell you something. God says in Jeremiah 29, only I know. Plans for your life. And shuts their eyes from looking on evil. Now, I want you to see reward. I want you to see results. For those people who will dwell in the consuming fire. Sinners are afraid. He will dwell. Thank you. It helps me there. He will dwell on the heights. That's what I'm taking you. I want to take you to see that life. To see that life. To see yourself from that perspective. He will dwell. It's a result. He will dwell on the heights. His refugee will be the Im Oh, I don't know that word. Let me let me read from different translation. <laughs> Pregnable. He will dwell on heights. His places of defense will be the fortresses of rocks. His bread will be given him. I love this. His water will be sure. And then results of that your eyes not someone else's eyes but your eyes it means your focus will be there your eyes will see king in his beauty <laughs> your eyes will see the king in his beauty It's like everybody distracted by darkness, but all you see is light. Everybody distracted by sicknesses, but you see healer. Everybody, you know, distracted with everything what is fallen, but you see that what's happening in the kingdom that God is building. Your eyes, say with me, my eyes. Yes, my eyes will see the king and his beauty. And they will see a distant land. We're dealing with vision. When you, are, when you dwell in those heights, you see far. You see far. You see something beyond your generation. You see something beyond this time. You see, because the Bible says that in the book of Revelation, that his eyes like a flame, a fire. We're dealing with the vision of God, the way he sees. So when you stand heights, oh, the results of that, your eyes, first of all, the breath will be given to you. Yeah, there is a fresh manna. Yeah, the water will be sure. You're flowing the spirit. And then your eyes will see the king and his beauty. You see open heaven. And then it says that you, that you will see land afar. You will have a vision. You can see the way he sees through all the generations. So for me, what I see now, 
It's not that important what's going to happen with my life. What's important for me is what the next generation will see through my life. What my sons will see through my life. Not emotions. Not a church life. And then you come home. And you are living your, your own life. There is no such a thing in the kingdom. So I want to help you with this as much as possible. To understand this. To get and try that life. First of all, when we're dealing with the consuming fire, we're dealing with the nature of God. He's inviting us to be part of his nature. Are you with me? So there is an invitation in the first phrases that I read. You know that it says, who among us can dwell in the consuming fire and who among us can dwell with the everlasting burning? It's an invitation. God is inviting us prophetically to become part of his nature. So now we're dealing with the nature of God. But we had a problem with the condition. How to get there into the nature of God. Into the nature of Jesus. I mean, I mean the nature of Father. That's why second part, Jesus came to this earth and he fulfilled that. And he became our righteousness because we cannot live righteous life. See, we read this in the Old Testament, but that prophetic word dealing with the New Testament because we're dealing with Zion. So now we see that the second part of that condition have to get into the nature of God came through Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then he says, no one comes where? Come on, say this one. No one comes to? No one comes to? So he became a door and now through Jesus Christ we have access into the nature of father see before jesus christ all we knew is about god but through jesus we have access to become like him again into his nature we're dealing with the image of god are you with me so through jesus christ who fulfilled that gap that second, that the condition, how to dwell. How can we dwell in the consuming fire? How can we dwell? You need to live righteous life. I don't even know how to live righteous life. So through Jesus Christ, through his blood, and because of him, we have access. Jesus said, who will come in and come out? Now I can become, I have opportunity to become more and more like him. Not like ministry that I'm presenting or denominations. Nothing wrong with that, but we really need to go back and begin to pursue God Himself. God Himself more than anything else. So now we have access, but at the same time, we have a choice in the New Testament. See, last night I said, we always cry and always saying, God, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. That's a wrong prayer. That's a wrong mindset. That's an Old Testament mindset. Of course, you read this in Isaiah 40, and chapter, chapter 40, verse 39. It says, those who wait upon the Lord. But that was a new te Old Testament. And the New Testament, God sent his spirit to this earth. So we are the busy ones, not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is available. He's not the busy one. We are. Last night I said, when God spoke to me, he said, son, I want your present much more than you want my present. I was shocked. He said, I want to have fellowship with you much more than you think you want to have fellowship with me. He said, for you to have relationship with me costs you nothing. But for me to have you. Come on, somebody. He said, but for me to have you 
cost me everything. I ran to you when Jesus died on the cross because I want you in my life. I want you to spend the whole eternity with me. He shifted my mindset. Second Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says, the, 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 the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us. He wants to have fellowship with me. Who am I to stop him? Oh my God, that changed my life. But we have a choice now. How far do we want to go in God? See, when we talk about those heights, it's a result. I want to tell you something about those heights. Because in those heights, when you're dwelling in those heights, your eyes see something that others cannot see it. Are you with me? Yeah. See, the deeper you go into his nature, the highest you stay and the further you see. Again, the, the deeper you go through the transformation, and I will talk to you quickly about this, through the transformation into his nature, the highest you stay in your position and the further you see through the spirit. So hear me well. When we talk about the fire of God, I heard so, I, before I heard so many sermons about the fire of God. But let me be real with you and real with the word of God because I fear the Lord. I cannot baptize you with the fire of God. No way. The anointing that he entrusted in my life can ignite passion inside of you to draw you and to inspire you to go back into the close intimacy with the Holy Spirit daily with persistence and different commitments every single day. When you wake up, discipline your flesh and say, God, this is the day of victory. I am dying to myself. And please place your hunger inside of me because I cannot have passion without your spirit. We cannot pursue God on our own emotions. We need to cry out his fire inside of us, his passion inside of us, his desires daily inside of me. Not to be distracted, but be persistent to pursue his face. You know, when I was with Jesus and he told me, son, because when he told me you're going to go around the world, I said, God, when? I was ready. The next day to pack my bags and go around the world. Otherwise, I, 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 anyways, I didn't have anything, you know, so there's nothing to lose. When you have nothing, you know, you're always like, God, just do whatever you want. I'm humble. No, you're not humble. You just don't have a choice. I don't want to go there because I can talk about this. I've been dealing with this in my previous years. Just fighting with, with, with me, with, within me to say something or not. You know? God wants to see patience when you have nothing. And behavior when you have everything. Some of you here, I want you to hear that. Slow process will build character inside of you. 
before he sent me around the world, his presence was dealing with me for more than seven years. Slow process will build your character. Fast results will build your pride. Keep pushing, keep claiming. Keep moving. Don't stop. I always hear this when you go through the airport, you know that. Keep moving, don't stop. I was like, praise the Lord, you're speaking even here. <laughs> you will stay on heights. That's exactly what God wants to take your life. To position yourself in the kingdom system. And to position yourself in his nature. To see differently. And to react differently. If you really want to determine your maturity, see through your reaction. It's not how much you pray. It's how you react. Did you know that you can pray so much and still not knowing God? But you cannot know God and pray less. I hope you understand what I'm saying right now. You can pray a lot and still not knowing God. Because you are in the middle of that prayer. You are center of that prayer. You don't pursue God. You don't pursue the knowledge of Him. You just pursue answer from Him. You can pray a lot and still not knowing God, but you cannot know God and pray less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is a purpose in prayer. Purpose in prayer is the voice of God. Now that there is a different level of the voice of God. I don't know why I'm going here because I didn't plan to talk about this. But I just want you to hear this. There is a different height in the voice of God. There is a different degree in the voice of God. The highest position in the voice of God is to understand God. His mindset. Because when I was with Jesus, I said, God, I'm ready to go. He said, son, pursue my face. I said, what is your face? He said, my face is my voice. And my voice in my presence. Stay there. And then your life will not going to be the same. Will not going to stay the same. Because as you're going to go, you're going to go representing me. Not the Christianity. I don't, I don't mind. I don't, I don't want to go. I don't want to say anything about Christianity. But God never calls us Christians. God calls us sons and daughters. And we have to become sons. Because see, it's easier to stay Christians. Because you can be a still spiritual baby and you call yourself Christians. But when you become a son, you need to take responsibility. Yeah. You don't wait for heaven. Uh, you bring heaven to earth. You, know? you, just, you don't wait for changes. You bring those changes into this, into this world. So with, with the level of your maturity, responsibility comes. But people don't want to grow in God. Because when, the more you're growing in God, the more you see differently. I don't see myself as an immigrant in this country, believe me or not. Has nothing to do with U.S., has nothing to do with Ukraine, has something to do with sonship and the kingdom of God. And I see myself as a royal priest in my generation. It has nothing to do with pride, has something to do with your transformation, with your DNA. And one more thing, people pursue power of God, power of God in his nature. You cannot have power of God without transformation. Because his nature carries his power. 
See, people want to have power. Have so many stories concerning the power of God. But, 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 but people pursue power without intimacy. It's impossible. People pursue fire without intimacy. No, you pursue to experience those heavenly emotions. But if you truly want to dwell in the consuming fire, you need to present yourself as a living sacrifice. That Holy Spirit can transform your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? So now through Jesus Christ, but in our days through the Holy Spirit, we have access into the nature of God to become more like Him. And you cannot become like Him in one day. Process will take place. Consistency will take place. Stability will take place. Hunger will take place. You have to be persistent in your, in your decision to pursue God Himself in your life. Hey, hey, you know, I've been traveling to many places and I see people, Christians, big churches. They're dancing and jumping and worshiping God. And at the same time, they are staying in unbelief, in fear, in confusion, anxiety, unforgiveness addictions it's like god what is going on what is going on what is going on with us what is going on with you what is going on with us i don't want to point fingers on anybody else but i said god what's wrong with us what's wrong with us something is missing something is off what is going on god and he said, son, I want you to go and read my word in Matthew chapter 3. Because uh, verse 11, so many people, they memorize that scripture, but they don't understand the meaning of that scripture. When the Bible says that John Baptist speaks there, and he said, I will baptize you in water for repentance, but the one who's coming after me is more powerful. Let me talk to you about the one who's more powerful than all your situations put in together. He's much powerful than I am and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire has nothing to do with emotions. Because the word baptism, it means to be submerged. So when the Holy Spirit came after the resurrection of Jesus Christ to this earth 2,000 years ago, he's still on a mission. He's still here. But we are missing his assignment. Uh, the, the assignment of the Holy Spirit. I know he brings people to Christ from the outside. I know he wants to transform our life from the inside. Did you know that everything after the salvation, it's all about transformation? See, the, 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 the book is... The, the, uh, Book of uh, Corinthians, chapter, chapter two, chapter three, Second Corinthians, chapter three, verse sixteen. It says there is a key moment there. I just want you to, to, to get this. I want to highlight something here. It says verse sixteen. But when one turns to the Lord, that's a critical moment. So you can, you can try whatever you want. You can try any religious. You can try any experience. You can try all the conferences. You can try whatever you want to try until you will become to the moment inside of you that you will say, God, now I need you in my life. Yeah. Like truly, I just want to be real with all myself. I just, I, I want to know you. So you have to tune yourself to him. And that's what's happening in this country. I have so much because I'm in trouble. And I've been in more than 60 countries. But he said, God spoke to me. He said, now pay attention to U.S. 
pay attention. I will, I will bring you to the American churches. I was like, God, they will not going to understand me. He said, believe me, you have in tongues. If you don't know what to say, pray in tongues, my Holy Spirit will come. <laughs> but his point, you ask, he's tuning people to himself. This country know about God. They just don't know his nature. That's why we allow so many things in our churches. Because we are not dealing with transformation. So many people that receive Jesus. But they've never been transformed into his image. And I'm not here to bring condemnation. I'm here to inspire you to begin to pursue God himself. So the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says, <clears throat> but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. I don't want to spend time here because we have so many wells in our religious system, in our mindset. Our perception, our concept, the way we see, the way we think, the way we know theology, the way we know scripture. But without the Holy Spirit, we cannot get the truth. I can get knowledge, but not the wisdom of God. To see from heaven to earth. So it says, watch this. Where the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And I touched this last night. Because it has nothing to do just with the, with the freedom from demons. It's something to do to remove everything out of your life according to the will of God. To take you to your destiny and your calling. Freedom from worries. Freedom from fear. Freedom from anxiety. Freedom from the religious system. Freedom from the wrong concept. Freedom from different mindset. God is delivering you and he's getting you into dominion. Because I said yesterday, he never created us for deliverance. He created us for dominion. So he's removing everything, including people, out of your life. Don't worry. When you decide to follow Jesus, think will happen. He's removing everything that will distract your life from his destiny. Mm -hmm. Including people. Someone needs to hear this. I don't know why, but someone needs to hear in this church. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Yeah, say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trusting you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I thank you that you remove everything that destructed my life. Including people. And you're going to place right people into my life. In Jesus' name. Are you with me? So now that the Bible says, I love this. I, I know that you know this passage, but I just want to highlight something here. Paul says, and we all. And we all, with unveiled faces, I love this, because unless you will become real with yourself, honest with yourself, honest with your own self, honest with your own self, That there is nothing to lose. I don't care about anything else. I truly want to know you. When you're honest with your own nature. When you're honest when you're by yourself alone. Are you still pursuing that? On Monday morning? Are you still want that? Because see, we are, we are, we, we, we're crying here, here. When we come to, to, to the platform, when we come, when we come and we're crying, God, have all of me. Is that true? Are you honest with your own self? Do you know the changes will take place? A lot of changes will take place. A lot of things God will approve out of your life. Are you ready for that? To transform your life into his image. 
God is, God is transforming everything on this earth right now, in this moment. I love changes. We all would unveil face beholding the glory of the Lord. Now it's our decision. Yeah, he gave us grace to Jesus Christ. But I am deciding this every single day that I will keep my focus on him. That I will keep my mind on him. You know, so many people ask me, how much do I have to pray? Do I have to pray five hours? Do I have to pray three hours? Do I have to pray one hour? I said, listen to this. I don't want to place my form upon you, my experience. But I want to tell you one thing. Pray until God will be in your mind all the time. Pray, pursue God until you will catch yourself. You will see that you're thinking about him all the time. You think, so do I have to pray 24-7? I said, we, we, don't talk to me about forms of prayer. Because when we talk about prayer, we're dealing with the intimacy with God, with fellowship with Him. I said, do you know that you can fellowship with God in your mind? And this is so strong because when God in your mind, you are so careful how you talk to people. When God in your mind... And you're walking with him, thinking of him. You're so careful the way you talk to people. He's watching. He's there. He's with you. He's with you. He's a son. I'm not with you only when you're in a secret room. I'm with you when you come out out of the secret room. <laughs> I'm there. I hear the way you're talking to people. I hear the way you're talking to people. Because one thing what you are telling me in the secret room, another thing what's coming out out of your mouth when you come out out of the secret room. Because in the secret room, you say, God, I trust you. But when you come out into a situation, you begin to function in unbelief. And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. The image of God is the nature of God. When God created us in his own image, we're dealing with the nature of God, which is the spirit of God. And it says, we're transformed into his, into the same, say with me, same image. Because I'm taking you have a few minutes. I just want to show you something where God is taking us. And I want you to understand this, to apply. Because without application, there is no transformation. So many people, they are still staying in the place of revelation. By now. So you know a lot. But there is no manifestation in your life. Because we need to move from the place of revelation to the application in, to be transformed to the manifestation. And God is taking us there to manifest him, to manifest his glory, to manifest his power, to manifest his wisdom, to manifest his understanding, to manifest his mindset, to manifest kingdom on earth. Are you with me? So it says that we all transform into the same image from one degree of glory to another. That's what I'm taking you. You cannot stop in one degree. Because last night I said, the moment you stop pursuing God, you will stop understanding Him. So you have to be transformed from one degree of His glory to the another degree. So you are going deeper into His nature to stay higher in His position and to see further. Through his spirit. Are you with me? So to, to be transformed from one degree of his glory into the another. For this comes not from the preacher, not from the Sunday service, not from. I don't want to go further. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. 
So when Jesus, when God spoke to me, he said, son, I want you to go back to Matthew chapter 3. He said, go, get, go ahead and read that scripture again. I, he will baptize us in the Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit came to this earth to, to, and he wants us to be submerged into his nature. But then I want you to see something. The fire of God is the nature of the Father. And the fire of God is the depth of his nature. Not an evil can stand there are you with me there is so many so many qualities of God so many different approach of God so we see different different natures of God that's why we have to be transformed from one degree of his glory to the another degree God is revealing himself himself today like never before yeah, in Exodus, Exodus chapter 6, God spoke to Moses and he said, I reveal myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is, uh, with the name of mighty. But with the name of Lord, I never revealed myself to them. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit wants to transform your life from one degree of his nature to another degree of his nature to another degree of his nature to another degree of his nature that you will go through salvation through healings through deliverance through the restoration and you go and you get to know him you get to know him you get to know him and until he will have all of your life Now you're representing him. You walk in his authority. You walk in his nature. Comes from the spirit of God. When you fellowship with the Holy Spirit daily, when you pursue him daily with the passion to become like him, I want to challenge you because to, today God is inviting us. Yeah, yeah. When you pursue to become like him more than anything else. It doesn't matter what I feel. It's my decision. I want to be persistent with that. I want to know you, God. I, I feel nothing today. And I don't care. I know that my spirit is placing in the heavenly places. I'm sitting there. I'm speaking from there. I want to know you. I want to become like you. I want to become one with your nature. So God is taking us into the depth of his nature. What we see, the Bible calls fire of God. God doesn't have fire. God say, the Bible says God is consuming fire. So for sinners, it's dangerous. For the Christians, it's necessary. Because when you walk in that nature, evil ones and all the demonic world, they cannot stand you. Do you really want to know where God is taking us? In what degree as a body of Christ? To become glorious? Thank you. I will give you a few, few, few scriptures and then we're going to pray right now, okay? And then we're going to pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to see something from the first John chapter one. I know you know that chapter, but let me go there. Look, look, verse five. Consume me with your fire. Consume me with your fire. First John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light. Now, I just don't have time to go to the nature of God, which Bible, which Bible saying he is light. What is light? Because we're dealing with the nature of God. It has nothing to do with sun. 
God creates son. God created son. But when Bible says God is light, we're dealing with his nature. There is so much we can talk about light of God. But when, 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 when John said here, and in him is no darkness at all, and I know the Bible, I know theology, I know a lot of things from the scriptures because I'm living there. The darkness, it means confusion. And the, 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 the original word, light of God, we're dealing with the knowledge of God and with the God's order. Because the darkness brings confusion. And the darkness is lack of knowledge. But darkness carries that nature. Same way as God being light carries nature. And the nature of God to be as a light. The Bible says there is no darkness in Him. In the bottom of that, the depth of that is the fire. Did you know the fire carries the nature and light at the same time? Are you with me? So when Bible says there is no darkness in Him, so I'm not talking to you to walk with God. I want to invite you to learn how to walk in God. Because in Him there is no darkness. And the Bible says there is no darkness at My God, that's the nature. So good for you, God. But John doesn't stop there. He's inviting us through the, through the revelation to manifest that nature. To become part of that. Are you with me? Watch this. Then he says, if we say, that's very powerful here. If we say we have fellowship with him, you can say that you have fellowship with him. That just the words. If there is no application in your life. If you don't practice that, then people will be confused. Because you are saying that you have fellowship with God, but still living in darkness. People are confused. What's going on? What's going, on with, what's going on with the Christianity? They are saying they have light. They are saying they have fellowship with God. But they are still living in darkness. It's impo it's, it is impossible. If you truly have fellowship with the, with the Holy Spirit. If you truly have fellowship with God. Something will change in your life. You cannot stay the same. If you are honest with yourself. So the Bible says, if we say we have fellowship with Him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But, I want you to hear this. But, if we walk, it's a process. If we walk in the light, as he is same degree just think about this but if we walk in the light as he is the light we have fellowship with one another oh people will see such a different behavior but I want to stop here. Every one of you, I want you to hear this. So the Bible says that God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. Because in His nature, nothing evil can stand. 
that's why when I was talking to God and I said God what's wrong with us we're praying in tongues and then we still it's the same time we are living in fear what is going on we're praying in tongues because tongues is just the signs so don't think if you're praying in tongues you know the Holy Spirit so we need to have fellowship with him to, to allow him because he wants to lead us. Do you remember the scripture in the book of Romans chapter 8? Bible says those who are led by the Spirit, you have to become available for him. That he can lead you somewhere. That he's taking you somewhere. That he's taking you somewhere. That you become a son of God. They are the sons of God. They, are, they, they will become a sons of God. So here is the thing. I say, God, how come? How come we see people, so many people, they know how to worship, but so many people don't know how to pray. They know how to pray on a daily basis after services. How come we're praying in tongues and still living in addictions? How come? That's why he pointed that scripture to me and he said, that I say in the Bible, I will baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire. But so many people, they talk about fire like some kind of emotional experience. It's a daily journey to pursue transformation, to be real with your own self daily dying to yourself until his nature will become your nature to the degree that Bible says when we walk in the light as he is in the light we can be transformed into his nature oh to the same degree I never forget when he spoke to me, he said, son, you, wherever you go, you are doing delivering services. This, this is what I do when I, when I preach the gospel. He said, you, 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 deliver demon, you deliver people from the demons, but there is a different degree in my nature. He said, did you know that you can come and when demons see my nature inside of you, they will ask you to leave them alone. You don't have to even scream at them. You just have to show up. I'm still in the process. I taste some of this. Oh, believe me, I have tr so many stories. I come to the gas station and then cashier, she's so trembling like this. I was like, I'm here just to pay for the gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, uh, yeah, you, you paid for the gas, but someone in you paid for my sin. She said, yeah, I have true stories, so many stories. She said, you're here to pay for money for me, but someone pays. You, you know, she said, you're here to pay and give me money, but I see that someone paid for me Jeremiah says chapter 20 verse 9 sometimes I think I will make no mention of his message there's different situations in our life sometimes I think I will make no mention of his message I will not speak as his messenger anymore but then his message becomes like a fire locked up inside of me burning in my heart and soul I grow weary of trying to hold it in I know 
why we have so many large churches as around the U.S. Mega churches, but there is no influence. And I'm not condemning them. I'm not judging them. I just know that. I just know why. We don't have fire inside of our bones. Because when you have that nature inside of you, you cannot stay silent. There is nothing that you can do. No, 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 no. You cannot stay silent. You will become a prophetic voice. You will speak the truth. You will speak the truth. You will. There is, there is no other life. There is no other option. It's like it's, it's in you. There is nothing I can do. There is nothing I can do. I cannot baptize you on fire. No. But I feel like God is inviting us for something deeper inside of Him. I feel like God is inviting us. He said, who among us can dwell? can dwell with the consuming fire who among us who will choose that who will go deeper who will go further who will decide today it doesn't matter how old are you and how, how many years you go into the church has nothing to, or who are you or you what kind of status you carry your apostle prophet evangelist i'm here to tell you you're first you are the son of god pursue god himself keep Keep moving forward to get to know Him. Pursue His nature to become like Him. Because when you meet people on the streets, they have no idea. They have, there's nothing to do. They don't know that you're a pastor, apostles, prophet. They're going to encounter your nature. And you're representing Him in this generation. What's going to happen with our kids? What's going to happen with our kids? We cannot change them, but we can impact their life. How can you impact their lives if you are not transformed into His image? There is nothing to... But this is what I see God is about to do right now. Do you remember book of Acts chapter 28? How many of you know that chapter? Do, do you know that chapter? Do you know that chapter? When Paul came to the island called Malta, do you, do you know the chapter? Yeah, yeah, it was so cold in that, in that region. So local people, I want you to see now. I want you to see my face right now. I want, I want to show you something there. I want to speak to you prophetically, even though I, I know the scripture. But I just want to see something the way God spoke to me and revealed to me. So here's the thing. When Paul came to the, to the, to the place of Malta, and, and, and local people, they started the fire. It was cold there. It was different environment cold environment so local people they start the fire but that fire for some reasons for some reason was so small for Paul because Paul himself get up when grab the bundles of sticks and then he let he put those sticks on the fire Paul is a priest Oh, I see this in Levitical chapter 6, verse 12. I don't want to go there. You know that scripture. See, to, 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 to that nature keep burning inside of you and that fire keep burning inside of you has nothing to do with God. Yeah, God already inside of you. But it's your choice how far you're going to go. How far you're going to go. I never forget ministers and pastors and leaders i never forget when i was reading the bible and i saw when god spoke to abraham and he said i want you to bring isaac as a sacrifice do you know that moment in the bible so the bible says abraham wake up in the morning get the isaac servants and they were in a journey for three days then on the third day god showed him a place on top of the mountain something about that place that God is taking us those heights oh as I'm speaking right now I see Matthew chapter 17 when Jesus took Peter John and James and they went 
up so far they was go they were going into the top of the mountain and suddenly the same Jesus that they've been hanging out with they get used to, to that Jesus now he's revealing his father the nature he revealed himself from inside out now they don't see him by flesh now or through flesh they see the nature coming out out of the flesh are you with me and the light was there <sighs> the natural father was there and they were shocked but to get there you have to collaborate with jesus you have to walk with him hey yeah, yeah. there is no feelings there when you're going up <laughs> You are sweating. There is no emotions when you're going up. There is a decision. There is a, there is a decision. There is something there that God will change your nature forever. Yeah, so, so, so Abraham, Abraham, when he saw that place, you know what happened? When he saw that place, he said to his servants, stay. He took Isaac and they went up into the mountain. And God spoke spoke to me he stopped me there he said son there is a place in my nature where i'm taking you that only you and your sacrifice will go you cannot go there with crowd it's not about sunday services Sunday service, praise the Lord, we can come together, worship God, hear the word, but there is something about your decision. There's something about different level of commitment. He said, there is a place in my nature, Matt, that only you and your sacrifice, that's it, will go. Only you and your daily sacrifice will go. There is no servants, there is no friends, there is no other people. Only you and your sacrifice will go. Only you and your sacrifice. When no one writes book about you, and people don't see you on television, but who cares? I'm going to the high place in God. I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper because all creation is waiting for sons of God to be revealed. It means the day will come. The day will come. You don't even know. People are chasing me in the airport. Who are you? I'm telling you the truth. I just came from the awakening Europe and what God did there, people were chasing me on the parking lot. Who are you? Where you came from? Are you from America? I said, no, I'm from the highest place. I'm from the secret room. I'm, 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 I'm coming down from there to do my mission, to do my mission. But here is the thing, I want to show you what God is about to do right now. So when Paul grabbed that bundle of sticks and he put those sticks on the fire, the Bible says, viper came out because of the heat. Because of the heat. of the heat and God stopped me there he said son read it again and I was reading again and Paul grabbed the bundles of six and put them on the fire and the viper came out because of the heat and he stopped me there he said son this is your mission wherever you go wherever you go of sticks with you <sighs> wherever you go bring that bundle of sticks this is your part yeah yeah everything else I will do it but I want something from you yeah but you need to you need to get those bundles of sticks every day you need to carry those bundles bundles of sticks he said when you're gonna put those bundles of sticks on the fire even if the fire is too small I'm here to tell you, we're going to collaborate with God right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God is about to ignite that temperature. 
Rabo Soto Hambrishia. God is about to ignite that, that temperature from inside out. You know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? You think you came here just for the regular service? You thought, I'm going to go see what he's going to say. This guy coming from Sacramento ah, has nothing to do with me. But I had the, I'm carrying the bundles of sticks. <laughs> I'm carrying the bundles of sticks. I'm about to put those bundles of sticks upon your life right now. And the Holy Spirit will ignite that temperature from inside out. You know what's going to happen? Piper will come out out of your life out of your destiny but i'm here to tell you the breakthrough is coming yeah the new ne the, the new season is coming yeah 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 yeah. we are moving forward and there is so many hungry people here that is ready to go further they 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 are not afraid to lose things they're not afraid to step in into the new season they are afraid from tomorrow kima sandalea brosi Shatiara me sabro ambo. Ketiara bobo soturia. I am not here by myself. I'm with the bundles of sticks. Rekataya mo sabro. Shitiara nduroso. Meketia bro sandia. Something is about to happen. God is telling me. Something is about to happen. I cannot stay silent. <laughs> oh, government, you will not shut, your mouth, shut my mouth. It has nothing to do with me. It has something to do with the nature of God inside of me. It has something to do with the voice of God inside of me. It has something to do for the destiny for my life. It has something to do with the calling. It has something to do with the church. It has something to do with the body of Christ on this earth that will become glorious. Ketiamo sambrehea. Rakatia Musambi Aruso Shitia. If you are hungry, just stand on your feet and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, open your mouth. Yeah, yeah. We need to collaborate with. I don't want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I'm not here to pray for you. I'm here to pray with you, people of God. I'm here to pray with you. Let's collaborate with the Holy Spirit. He's about to take us to the highest place. To the highest place, to the highest place, Shitia Mosara Baba Satia. Uh, Pastor Matt gave me permission to be myself here, which I usually do. I cannot, but I don't know how to pretend. I just want to be myself. But I want to tell you something. If he gave me permission, I want to ask you something. I don't want you to pray quiet. You will say it has nothing to do. When we come together, it means there is something about your sound. When you release the sound of the Spirit. Every time in the Bible when Jesus took authority, He raised His voice. If you really want to take authority over your life, over your soul, take authority over your destiny, over your house, over your kids, right now, this is the moment. Raise your voice in the Spirit and let the Spirit of God change the temperature of this environment. Holy Spirit is about to shift and change temperature from inside out. Come on, lift your voice, church. Lift your voice in the spirit. God is igniting temperature.
Come on, come on, lift your voice in the spirit. It's okay, lift your voice. It's your moment with God. Kitiya Naramosa, Rakatiya Lamehembrosha. All the vipers will come out. All the vipers will come out. All the vipers will come out. All the sicknesses, disease, fear, oh, all the anxiety will come out. Alex, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Come on, lift, lift the keyboard, please. Lift up the keyboard, lift up the keyboard and the voice of Alex. Shanda, 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 Leka Kura, Mesa Tia. Rakatia Mosamble Heya. Come on, saints, don't stop praying in the spirit. As he's worshiping God, you pray in tongues. You, church, pray in tongues right now. Let him worship God. God is shifting atmosphere. God is shifting temperature right now, inside out. Come on, come on, lift your voice. and pursue God be persistent in the prayer right now lift your voice in the spirit let the Holy Spirit intercede all according to the will of God your fire Purify our soul. 
Purify our thoughts. Purify our emotions. Purify our bodies. We're all yours. We have all of us. We want to be submerged into your nature. It's a very serious decision to be fully sold down to God himself. So our time is flying. I want to invite people who will respond to that invitation, but I want you to think twice right now. This nature costs all of me. No longer I live for myself. Now, this invitation, not for everybody. I wish that everybody will respond to this. But I want you to think twice. Are you ready for this journey? Because changes will take place. But there is a reward. You will stay in heights. You will dwell on heights. Your eyes will see the King of it in His beauty. If you truly, truly want this, I want you to come up quick to the front. I want you to stand right here. Stay to, and, and, uh, stand on your feet. It's going to be mo more space for people to come. I need keyboard, please. I'm so sorry, but I want to ask sound, sound guy, keyboard and his voice right now to be louder. Thank you, Jesus. Something about the sound, I wish I would have more time to explain to you. Because right now, God will use sound. God always will use something that you have. is about to use your sound your voice now everybody who's standing there this is not a show no, 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 no. This is a holy moment right now. God is separating people to himself. He's going to mark them. I break every curses. I break every strongholds upon this city. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm breaking every walls. I, I break and I stop every demonic agenda. Yes, 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 yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, don't forget about people right now. You and God say, God, have all of me, have all of me, have all of me. Come on, begin to talk to God seriously. Be honest with yourself. God, have all of me. Touch me, touch me, touch me. Touch. Ignite, ignite that fire. Place that hunger inside of me. Place that hunger inside of me. That comes from your nature. Place that hunger that comes from your nature. Come on, begin to ask him. Place that hunger that comes from your nature. Everlasting God, everlasting burnings, everlasting God, everlasting burnings, consuming fire. Rabro Shatia Rasanda, Riketia Ramahamros. 
Rokoture haya. Rokoture haya. Rokoture. All the sicknesses you hear my voice right now. Oh, flee from this place. All the demonic spirits you hear my voice. I command you to leave these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of power, you hear my voice. I command you to leave these people. Oh, Makaya, spirit of fear, you hear my voice. You know that I have authority in Jesus Christ. I command you to leave now. Rabosha, Rabosha, Tia. Rekia Ramanda, Rabrosondo, Rehendi ala Rabosa, Rebrosatia. We are preparing the way for you, Lord. We are preparing the way for you, Lord. We are preparing the way. Even in this service, we are preparing the way for you, Lord, for your glory to show up. Israels came to the Jericho they saw such a huge wall that wall was 
keeping them from that promise. Listen, I just want to show you the kingdom principles and the way God works. So God told them to walk around that city for seven days. There is so much there, I just have no time to explain today because God was dealing with their faith and trust. They are walking for seven days and the, the last day they, they walked seven times which is represent the fullness of God. And then, and then God needs to use something to break that wall. Yeah. Listen, God always will collaborate with you. He needs to use something which you have. Then he said on the seventh time, I want every one of you to shout. And I will use your sound. And I will use your words. And I will release my power. something more but something is blocking something is keeping us from the new season from that new decree in God it's like God something must be broken in my life I cannot do this on my own I need your power I need your power I need your power so that's why I want you I, I want to ask you every one of you if you are serious with God forget about people right now forget about people right now has nothing to do that with them has something to do with you and your sacrifice God is inviting you only you and your sacrifice I'm willing to sacrifice my reputation it has nothing to do with my face I want to die to myself to carry your nature God use my voice right now but release power and break that wall I want to step in into your promises I want to go into your promises there is much more in God Use my voice, release your power, and break that wall. Use my voice and release your power and break that wall. God, use my voice and release your power and break that wall. God, use my voice, release your power and break that wall. God, use my voice, release your power, and break that wall. Kea Masandia, Shiala Brosotoria, and you keep, come on, come on, come on. Shataya, 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 Rosotia La Bresa. Tia la me satia, rokore me hantaya. Now, if you are serious with God, has nothing to do with me. God use any methods. God will use anything, but He's gonna use your voice to release His power. And the count of three, every one of you, I want you to shout word fire. I want you to shout that word fire because that's exactly what we need. You need His nature. God, release your power that will attract us our life, will break that wall, and we can go deeper into your nature, into your promises, uh, that we will become more, more, more like you. So on the count of three, every one of you, I want you to begin to shout the word fire. Keep showering, don't stop. If you are serious with God, press in. 
And all I do, I'm gonna lay hands on you because I need to release that woods on you, okay? I need to play, play I need to put that woods on you. Something that God allowed me to carry it in my life. So it has nothing to do about me, it has something to do about his grace that he's releasing right now. Are you ready? Close your eyes, forget about people. God's gonna use your sound to release his power, and that power will break every wall and will take you to the new season because that's exactly what God is doing in this church, in this city, with the body of Christ. This is not just for this local church, it's the, for the body in the city. This yes. is the body, the, the whole body of Christ in the city. It has something to do with the Spokane, it has something to do with this land, it has something to do with this environment, it has something to do with this season. If you are ready, you are the forerunner. Yeah, 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 yeah. God's gonna take you further into His nature. One, two, three, release! 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 I need help! Whoa! I need help! Fire! Receive! 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 Keep shouting! Yes, 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 I need help! Fire, 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 fire. Receive. Receive. Receive! Don't stop crying!
Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Father, I bless them right now. Right now, as you're releasing your grace over them. As you're releasing grace over them. As you're breaking all the walls right now by your power. I release your grace. I release, I release your blessings over them right now. Over their lives. Over their destiny. Oh yes, I release your blessings over their homes. Over their kids, their children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive healing right now. Receive healing. I want you to breathe out. If you have sicknesses in your body, just let it go. Breathe out right now. Yes, let it go. In the mighty name of Jesus. All the sicknesses, all the disease, I cast you out and I command you to live now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and knowledge, the spirit of might and counsel, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the Lordship come upon you. Come on, receive, 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 receive. I bless this church, I bless this body, I bless Pastor Man and Matt and Victoria. I bless the whole leadership team here. I thank you for the new season and I thank you for everything that is about to take place. For this church, for this body. Come on, lift your voice and lift your hands and begin to glorify God. Begin to worship Jesus. Begin to thank God right now. Come on church, thank Jesus, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to Jesus. In all of the glory, all of the glory is yours. It's yours. Come it's on, yours. let your voice and worship. In all of the glory, all, all of the glory is yours. It's yours. It's yours. Oh, 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 
God, we thank you for your fire that fell today. Show us how to keep a huge bundle of sticks, Lord. <laughs> Not just for ourselves, but for this entire area. God, I thank you that what you have done here is going to spread. There is no denomination that is going to keep it from spreading. There is no religious spirit that's going to keep it from spreading. There is no political spirit that's going to keep it from spreading. And Lord, I just declare right now that what you've done here is going to ignite Spokane, Washington for you in Jesus' name. And I just want everybody, if you agree, I just think it's appropriate to say fire. Fire! We seal what you've done here today, Father, by the blood of your Son and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people with one loud, unified voice cry, Amen! Amen. Woo! Are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm still.